Greenfield is a company that's going places. They know their strengths, they know their market, and clearly they have a plan for the future. And the Royal Enfield Hunter is a great example of a company that knows what it's doing and where it's going. Heads up, this bike is gonna sell by the container load. As always, if you like this video, then hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We're also on Instagram and Facebook, so if you're after a daily fix of Biker Talk content, then follow us on those platforms. Also, if you're after any Biker Talk merch, then use the code BIKER10 at checkout to get 10% off any order through our online store. We still have a few shirts and hats available before we start a run of the next round of designs. Now, we've just set up a Biker Talk Facebook group that we hope will become a bit of a community where you can post a question, help troubleshoot, or share photos of your bike, or talk about a great ride you've done. So when you're done watching this video, get over to Facebook and request access to the group. But for now, back to the amazing new offering from Royal Enfield, the Hunter 350. The Hunter has Royal Enfield's wonderful 349cc single cylinder J-series engine that has already been seen in both the Meteor and the Classic 350. It's air and oil cooled and puts out a very adequate 20.2 brake horsepower at 6,100 RPM and 27 Newton meters of torque at 4,000 RPM, which to me, for the urban commuter style of bike that this is, is absolutely fine. The chassis has been revised from the one seen on both the Classic 350 and the Meteor 350. Royal Enfield have designed the chassis geometry on the Hunter 350 to give the optimal height to weight ratio with a wide, long and comfortable one-piece seat. The Hunter has 41mm telescopic forks with 130mm of travel and a 300mm fixed disc with a twin piston floating caliper that sits on a 17-inch cast alloy wheel and 110-70 tubeless tyre. On the rear, it has twin tube emulsion shocks with six step adjustable preload that has 102 mil of travel and a 270 mil disc with a single piston floating caliper, again on a 17 inch cast alloy wheel with 140 slash 70 tubeless tire. Just like all new bikes these days, dual channel ABS is standard. The Hunter is really accessible with a wet weight of just 181 kilograms, a seat height of 790 mil, a wheelbase of only 1370 millimeters and a 13 litre fuel tank. Thankfully, the Hunter also comes standard with a centre stand. There's an LED tail light, a digital and analogue instrument cluster that has an odometer, a trip meter, a gear indicator, a fuel gauge with a low fuel warning, a clock and a service reminder. There's also a USB charging socket. The Hunter comes in six modern and good looking colourways, the Rebel range in blue, red and black, and the Dapper range in ash, white and grey, and the pricing in Australia starts from $7,590 right away for the Dapper versions and $7,690 right away for the Rebel versions. And it of course comes with a three year unlimited kilometre warranty and three years roadside assistance. Now for me, that's a brilliant little package at a very affordable price point. Firstly, I love the style. It looks like a fresh offering. Whereas the Classic 350 looks like a tribute to Royal Enfields of the past, the Hunter 350 looks modern, and the way I see it is a real nod to where Royal Enfield is going. I love the indicators, the headlight, the tail light, the graphics on the tank, and the wheel rims. They're all good quality, and certainly no need to swap any of those out. The tank shape is classic, but modern. It's classic with that teardrop shape, but modern with the graphics and colors. The seat looks great and is reasonably comfortable. It's certainly comfortable enough for the type of riding you'd expect to be doing on this bike. Urban riding, city commuting, that kind of thing. The stock exhaust sounds wonderful. It's got a bit of that classic Royal Enfield thump, but it also crackles and pops. All up, it's a fun little bike to listen to as you cruise about. The gear shifter is solid. One of my gripes about the Meteor was that the gear shifter felt flimsy. Not so with the shifter on the Hunter. It sneaks into gear and feels really sturdy. This is another really good handling bike from Royal Enfield, and it's due to a few factors. Firstly, the 17 inch wheels, combined with the redesigned chassis and the short wheelbase, revised rake and trail angles, as well as the very low wet weight of 181 kilograms. I found it great in traffic filtering. The handlebars aren't too wide and the throttle response is predictable and it's equally planted and stable through some twisty road. And because of the lightweight, it feels like it's got a little bit more pep than some of the other bikes with the J-Series engine. 
and on the couple of occasions where I carried a pillion, it was absolutely fine cruising on the freeway at 100 kilometres an hour. Accessibility is something that Royal Enfield are pushing in their marketing material for the Hunter 350. And I think it's absolutely spot on in terms of the shorter wheelbase and reduced weight, but also in terms of the price point that this bike sits at. And for those reasons, I think the Royal Enfield Hunter is gonna be a winner in the new rider or learner segment, but honestly, also for experienced riders looking for a cheap commuter or someone wanting to chop it and create a cool little custom. As soon as I jumped on it, my first thought was to add some knobbly tires and turn it into an urban scrambler. And at the price point that it sits at, it'd be a really affordable option. I can really see this bike with the J-Series engine and a bolt-on subframe being the next big thing as an entry-level cafe or custom bike, much like the Yamaha SR400. Like most of the Royal Enfield range, there wasn't too much that I didn't like. First up, the offset clock. Seriously, that just does my head in. I know why they've offset it, because it leaves space for the tripper navigation pod, but I would love to have just seen that centered and then offset the tripper if you decide to add that option. I've used the tripper on the Meteor that I have and it's fine, but to be honest, if I'm gonna be using this type of navigation, then I'm more of a fan of the Beeline. For me, it's just more intuitive. Secondly, I would love to have seen some gloss colourways. I know the matte paint schemes are probably more desirable for a younger rider, but I'm a simple bloke and I like shiny things. And if I own one, it'd be stripped down and off for a custom paint job. I really struggle with the mirrors, with both a little bit of vibration and with them coming loose, but there's nothing a little bit of Loctite wouldn't fix. And finally, the graphics on the tanker stickers. They look great, but I would love to have seen them painted on. But you need to keep in mind that this bike is built to a certain price point. It's no big issue for me, as I'm sure I'd get some new graphics done when I'm getting my shiny, fancy new paint job done. The Hunter 350 is no fluke. It's a result of careful consideration of what Royal Enfield's core customer base are after, and it's a real strategic offering to appeal to a younger market, which it does brilliantly. It handles really well. There's enough power for the style of bike that it is, it looks brilliant and it sounds fantastic. And as far as grin factor goes, well, it sits at about an eight and a half out of 10 for me. It's fun, it's agile, it's got old school Royal Enfield character and new modern Royal Enfield style and charm. So there's plenty to be grinning about when you're out and about on it. Most of my riding on the Hunter 350 was urban riding around my beautiful city. I love living in Sydney. It's big enough to be a truly modern city, but when you dig beneath the surface, there are some really wonderful little nooks to be discovered. Sydney is a multicultural city, and with that comes diversity. It's geographically diverse, covering from the mountains to the ocean. It's diverse in its people, its food, and its culture. We have beaches, we have a stunning harbour, we have world-class architecture and a world-class food scene. A lot of Aussies like myself fancy themselves as a bit of a gun home cook. And what better way to source local produce than heading to your local farmer's market. So it was off to the Marrickville markets for a coffee and a falafel roll at Kashari Corner to see what local produce was on offer. The Marrickville markets is located on the grounds of the Addison Road Community Centre. So while I was there, I decided to catch up with Rosanna Barbero, who's the CEO of Addy Road Community Centre, to have a quick chat about what they do. Rosanna, great to catch up. Tell me a little bit about Addy Road and what it is you do here. Well, Addy Road is a charity on this nine acres. And one of the main programs that we have is that we provide affordable food to people who are doing it tough. And so we have a food pantry, but we also have a big hall where we pack hampers and we distribute those to people. So it's not just the food pantry, you've also got arts and all sorts of other things happening here, markets, what else is happening here? Well, yes, we have the wonderful organic markets, we have shops, we've got a fair trade shop and products from all over the world that are helping communities outside of Australia. We have art galleries, wonderful art galleries, and we also have theatre and there's always a production on. And do you reckon we can make turn Addy Road into a bit of a motorcycle destination? Absolutely. We, we already are a motorcycle destination. I'm sure we can cope with an increase. But it's a wonderful place because there's lots of parking, it's very safe, and there's lots of things to do, including ordering wonderful food or coffee from this wonderful enterprise. Which to motorcyclists is very important. Good coffee is very important. It's very important. 
There are organisations like Addy Road all over the world, and just like Addy Road, they could do with your help. If you're in Sydney, consider heading down to see how you can get involved. And if you live elsewhere, look at getting involved in a community organisation in your hometown. In fact, if you are involved in a community organisation, then add a comment so we can give them a shout out. But back to the bike. The Hunter 350 is probably the perfect commuter or learner bike and it's a bike that's going to be another massive hit for Royal Enfield in Australia as it has been so far worldwide. The Hunter 350 is the highest volume contributor for Royal Enfield in India with well over 40,000 units sold and 75,000 orders taken. Those are some really big numbers and it makes me excited to see what Royal Enfield have in store in the future. We know the Super Meteor is on its way and that bike looks incredible. And there are rumours of a 450cc liquid cooled Himalayan and Scram and who knows what else. Either way, it's an exciting time if you're in the market for a new bike and a very exciting time if, like me, you're a fan of this iconic brand. If you like this video, then please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you're after some Biker Talk merch, then check out our online store and remember to use the code BIKER10 at checkout to get 10% off your order. That's it for today. We'll be back next week with our first rider story for the new season. Till next time, stay safe and enjoy your next pie run.